To start developing applications with Svelte, we'll need to install two things on our system. The first is Node.js. Node.js is a JavaScript runtime environment that allows us to use JavaScript outside of the browser. We won't need to learn Node or how to write server-side code, but we need to install it to have access to NPM. NPM is Node.js's package manager and is part of how we create new Svelte projects. We also use it to install additional tools and libraries that we want to use in our application. To download it, point your browser to nodejs.org and click on the latest LTS version on the left. LTS stands for long-term support and is the most stable version available. Once the download has finished, you can run the installer and follow the prompts in the setup wizard. If you're on a Windows machine, you may get the option to install the Chocolatey Package Manager. It's not required for Svelte, but if it's something you want, you can check the checkbox to include it in the installation. Chocolatey will use Windows PowerShell to also install the latest stable release of Python and Visual Studio Build tools. Depending on the antivirus you use, you might get a warning from it, but it's safe to create an exception. Once the installation is complete, we can verify that Node and NPM was installed by checking their versions in the terminal. The Windows version of the terminal is the command prompt. To open it, tap the Windows button on your keyboard, then type CMD, and press Enter. If you're on a Mac, click the launchpad icon in the dock, type the word Terminal in the search field, and click on Terminal. If you're on Linux, just press Ctrl Alt and T on your keyboard. Once you've got it open, type node, space, dash, V, and press Enter. If the terminal shows a version number, node was successfully installed. We can do the same for the package manager and type npm, space, dash, V. It should show the version that was bundled with node. The second thing we'll need is an integrated development environment, or at least a text editor. We can highly recommend Visual Studio Code. It's free, available for all platforms, and includes many features that make development easier and faster. To install VS Code, point your browser to code.visualstudio.com and click on the download button. The installation is pretty straightforward, but if you get stuck, go to the documentation by clicking on Docs in the top menu bar. Then, expand the setup dropdown and choose your platform. There are Svelte extensions available for VS Code that will make life a lot easier for us as developers. If your window doesn't show a bar on the left, go up to the View menu, then select Appearance, and make sure Activity Bar is checked. Once the bar is active, we can open the Extension Explorer by clicking its button. From there, we can type Svelte in the search box to search for Svelte-related extensions. We're looking for the Svelte for VS Code extension. It should be the first one in the list of results. Svelte for VS Code enables syntax highlighting and IntelliSense for Svelte components. Just click on the Install button and wait for it to finish. The second extension you can add is Svelte 3 Snippets. This extension helps us code faster by adding boilerplate snippets for things like conditional blocks. All right. That's all we need to start developing applications with Svelte. Now that we have our environment set up and ready, we can create our first Svelte project. To keep things organized, we've created a folder on our main C drive called Svelte Projects. We'll use this folder to store all our projects for the rest of this course. Let's start by opening the terminal and navigating to our new project folder with the cd command. So, we write CD, then the drive, then the path to the folder, and press Enter. We can create a new spell project in one of two ways. By cloning the project repo with dgit. Or by scaffolding a new project with vite. For the moment, we'll use dgit to clone the repository from GitHub, but we do cover vite later on in the course. Dgit is a tool to clone GitHub repos without their history and was created by the same developer that made Svelte. We'll start by writing npx as the command. Then dgit as the tool that npx will use. 
then Svelte.js slash template as the repo to clone. And finally, we give our project a name. We'll call our project, first app, with dashes between the words. The terminal may ask you to install dgit if it's not on your system already. It's safe to install it, so choose Y and press Enter. If the project was cloned successfully, it'll show the message, clone spelt JS slash template to first app. We'll also need to install the project's dependencies. So change directory into the first app folder with the cd command. Then write, npm install, and press enter. It might take a few seconds, but once all the dependencies have been installed, it'll show the number of packages that were added to the project. All that's left to do now is to open the project in VS Code. To do that, write the word code, then a space, and a period, and press enter. The project we cloned from GitHub earlier already has some starter content. That means we can start up the dev server right away and see a working app in the browser. We can do that directly from inside VS Code by using its built-in terminal. Go up to the top menu and select Terminal, then choose New or use the shortcut on the right. VS Code will open a new terminal pane at the bottom of the editor with our project's path already selected. From there, just run the command npm run dev to start the development server. Svelte will compile and bundle the app behind the scenes, then show this message in the terminal output. We're only interested in the top line, which is the address the app is being served on. If you're on Windows or Linux, you can hold the control key and click the link to open it up in the browser. If you're on a Mac, use the command key instead. What's nice about the dev server is that it will hot reload any changes we make to our app. We'll be able to see those changes reflected instantly in the browser. Expand the source directory in the navigator, then double click on the app.svelte file to open it up in the editor window. Now let's make some sort of change to the code, like removing this paragraph below the heading. If we save the file and go back to the browser, we can see the paragraph is gone, and we didn't have to manually refresh the page. So far we've only seen the pre-built app. We haven't really made anything ourselves, so, let's do that. Go back to the app.svelte file and remove everything inside it. We'll start by adding an h1 tag with some text that says, Hello Svelte. If we save the file and take a look in the browser, we'll see a big heading with the text. So the changes we've made to the file have taken effect. Next, we'll make the text dynamic, which is to say, we'll make it depend on data that's not hard-coded in the HTML. We'll define a script section with a pair of open and close script tags. Inside the tags, we'll define a constant called name with a value of John. Then, we'll replace the word spelt in the heading with a pair of curly braces and add the name constant in between. If we save the file and take a look in the browser, we'll see the heading has updated with the name from our constant. You can add your own name between the quotes and it will update in the browser when you save the file. Finally, we'll add some CSS to the heading. Like the script section, we'll define a style section with a pair of style tags. Then, we'll select the H1 and set the text align property to center. Below that, we'll paste in the beautiful spelt orange for the text color. If we save the file and head over to the browser, the heading should now be centered and orange. What we just made is a so-called component. A component is a reusable unit that performs a single task, like a registration form or a header menu. We then combine these units into pages that later forms a fully functional Svelte application. A component uses the .svelte file extension and is made up of three language blocks. The script block contains the data and functionality for the component. The markup block contains the HTML markup. And the style block contains the CSS for the markup. We only need to define the script and style blocks. The markup block is anything outside the other two and doesn't have to be surrounded by any tags. You don't have to worry about components right now, we cover them in more depth later on in the series. For now, we'll use the app.svelte file to learn the fundamental concepts of Svelte.
All right, that concludes this lesson on your first app in Svelte. In the next video, we'll learn more about how the Svelte application instance works. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.